Hans Havenman. I am half owner of H and H Fish, one of the H's. Heidi being my partner is the other half. We have the shop here in Santa Cruz at the harbor, which we sell seafood out of. It's kind of our flagship. We have a thriving CSF, got a, a whole bunch of members and it's doing really well. It's almost the exact same thing as a community supported agriculture, CSA. And so that's what they're based on is you're supporting the farmer. So you get the farm's box of vegetables right delivered to your door or to your drop site. We're doing the same thing with seafood. The main motivation for people when they sign up for a CSF, you know, they're going to get the freshest of what comes off the ocean, especially when we incorporate the fishermen and they get to see what's going on. They get to, I think, feel more of a part of it. My name is Alan Lovewell. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Real Good Fish. We're a community supported fishery based here in the heart of the Monterey Bay and Moss Landing. We should all be getting fish direct from fishermen. It should be that easy. But the reality is it's not that easy. Seafood supply chains evolved to where they are today because of the need to specialize and to reduce risk. And so that's why you have potentially you know, 10 to 12 to 20 different players in a lot of supply chains. And the idea behind the CSF and behind Real Good Fish was to break away from that model and that mold and really start to place some more emphasis on where food is coming from, who's catching it. You know, the boats out there will come in, literally come across the table and in a few hours they'll be in a box on its way for overnight service. Everyone that's a part of the Real Good Fish community is, you know, loves the experience. They really love, you know, the different variety of seafood they get. They love the storytelling, they love the connections and being part of something that, again, feels a little bit more real and authentic than, again, just going to the grocery store. My name's Aaron Longton. I'm a commercial fisherman in Port Orford, Oregon. We're at Port Orford Sustainable Seafood, which is a community-supported fishery. Our fish never leaves our possession until you got it in yours. The generations long uh, supply chain. You have all these different entities that you're depending on to be in unison to get the product from the boat, processed, transported to the consumer. In the COVID thing, you know, it just showed that it's hard to depend on that kind of a system. We had happened to luckily 10 years previous to this, start thinking in that fashion and building a system that kind of circumvented the old system. None of us could have ever designed or come up with a strategy that would have resulted in the outcome that we've seen associated with COVID. You know, recognizing that 90% of the seafood industry basically collapsed overnight in the periods of March and April, and all these fishermen were struggling to find new markets because the predominant market in this country is wholesale and export. You know, with those channels of distribution and markets gone, we were in a unique place to be able to buy a lot more seafood. We more than doubled our membership over that period, so we've seen a lot of changes and it's, and it's all been for the best for us. We're, we're actually kind of had an upturn since the COVID. People are being a lot more conscientious about where their food comes from and eating healthier, I think. Since COVID's hit, you know, people looking for alternative ways to get their food, it's skyrocketed. Like our numbers are just gone through the roof and it's been almost hard to keep up on. Are you gonna be a fisherman? Run this. Are you gonna take over my business? Are you? Well, I am really optimistic that, it, that this whole thing is gonna continue. And I think that people have kind of entered a new phase and, and really cooking and, and, and creating great food for themselves and their family. Fortunately, again, with the COVID situation, which there are not a lot of fortunately scenarios, is people are cooking more at home and they're excited to try new things. And we have, again, some of the most exciting food on the planet.